My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence on Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're speaking to Sam Hewen, who's a Scottish actor best known for his starring role as Jamie Fraser in the Stars drama series Outlander. He's also a producer, a very successful entrepreneur, and a New York Times bestselling author. He's back at it again with his latest book that he co-wrote with his friend and colleague, Graham McTavish, called Clanlands in New Zealand, Kiwis, Kilt, and an Adventure Down Under. The book says, buckle up, grab a dram, and get ready for another unforgettable ride, because they're back. Sam Hewen and Grant McTavish are no strangers to the rugged beauty of Scotland, but this time they're setting their sights on a new horizon, New Zealand. Join our intrepid Scottish men on their latest epic adventure across the land of the Long White Cloud in this thrilling follow-up to Clan Lands setting out to explore a country that Graham calls home and that Sam has longed to visit, these sturdy friends immerse themselves in all that New Zealand has to offer. Stunning landscapes, rich history, world-class food and drinks, and much to Graham's mounting anxiety and Sam's deep satisfaction, famously adrenaline-fueled activities. As ever, there's not nearly enough space in their trusty camper van with plenty of good-natured competition and tormenting to go around. Sam and Graham's friendship is put to the test once again as we learn about the Southern Seas, exploring the fascinating story of its people while testing the very limits of Graham's sanity. Like the very best budding movie sequel, the latest installment is full of unforgettable experiences and lovable characters, promises to be even more memorable rides with the two of the most entertaining travel companions around. So say goodbye to your inhibitions and Kia... Aura to New Zealand like you've never seen it before. So here to discuss the book and have a little bit of fun is actor, producer, entrepreneur, and one of the best people I know, Sam Hewen. I'm so excited to have you on here. So thank you for joining me. Good to see you, Monica. Yeah, yeah. It's thanks so for having me. You. Um, so I have to start out. I said before we started and I was going to say that I was going to say it during it. Um, how amazing you are and that you haven't changed a single day from before the pilot of Outlander through to now with all your projects and everything you've done. You're the same exact person, same sweetest person and like an amazing human being and friend to talk to. And I just love you. That Well, that's very kind of you to say, but I, I think um, I, I think it's not true. I think there's there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. This is all fake um, underneath. This completely different human being. I have a double, actually. I am the double. Um, no, it's been a great journey. I'm very lucky. And um, yeah, it's given me a lot of opportunities as well, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, and you've, you've done quite a lot really quickly. I want to talk about your book, obviously, but I just had to yeah. bring up that I have. Ah. That's about me, that it's right on my desk and it's half empty. But it- yeah, that explains a lot. That's why you're being so nice. <laughs> halfway down the gin bottle it does that but um no I mean it's uh that's my latest baby and I'm really proud of it it's you know a, a gin that's um inspired by from where I'm from all made in Scotland from my from the southwest of Scotland all the botanicals and yeah it's done it's done really well so I'm really happy well let's get started so really quickly you were in New York my hometown um you yeah. live here because I know that you're here a lot what was it like coming here? You did a lot of like the late night shows and everything. You got to explore New York, but now you're back home. So what do you love about New York? And are you excited to back, you know, to be back in Scotland now? Oh God. Yeah. I love New York so much. It's such a great city. It's got great energy. The people, you know, people from everywhere around the world. Um, and so many great cuisines, great, great architecture. I just love it. it. It's really cool. And it feels very familiar now. I think I've got some great friends there. Um, we, I was there to promote um, our gin at a, and our whiskey at an event, which was really fun. And then, yeah, we did the late night shows as well, which was so cool to to go out and uh, and celebrate the gin, I guess. And, and the book, of course. Of course the book. Yes, of course. And the book is so good. So I'm going to jump into it. You do, you know, you take all these adventures. 
you and Graham torture each other through these adventures. Um, this latest book is so exciting because it's about New Zealand. And I yeah. want to ask you, you know, in the very beginning of the book, you mentioned how difficult it was for you to get there. And at one point you were like, I, I might even take a ship there. Like I'm in the middle of COVID. I'm just, there was so much. So what happened? How did you finally yeah. get there? What, what was would, the story? How did you make it there? Honestly, it was a real saga. And I think um, it's amazing that we even made it. I mean, you know, it was sort of towards the end of the COVID situation and, um, We'd been talking about where we wanted to go for the, for the next season of the show and also the book. And um, we talked about Scandinavia. We talked about, you know, the, the north of Scotland, the islands, the highlands, maybe even Ireland, um, the connections, the Scottish connections. And then New Zealand. New Zealand was the place at the time that had no COVID, was relatively uh, open at the time. So we, we planned on that. But then, of course, all good plans go awry. You know, uh, I got covid I had an injury. Then there was a, a, a lottery system to get into the country and we couldn't get in. I couldn't get a ticket. And then eventually I did. And then I had to go into quarantine when I was there. And so it, it just felt like there were a lot of barriers, a lot of challenges to get there. But we were so lucky. We were supported by stars, by the publisher and, and I guess a determination that we wanted to do this. But there were many times where I thought, I'm not sure this is going to happen, but also I'm not sure I even want to go through this. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad I did because we had such an, an incredible, amazing time. And I don't want to give too much away about the book. I read the entire thing, but there's a section in it that I think is hilarious that both you and Graham did. When you wrote five, technically Graham broke the rule and wrote six, but five things about each other. Oh, yes. Two are true from each list? Uh, yeah, God, I can't remember what we wrote. You know, it's um, I, of consciousness at times, but uh, <laughs> on page 62 on my copy, I have it, two. and it's you didn't know about Sam Hewen by Graham, and then there's oh, there you go, yeah, then there's you know about Graham and, okay, yes. <laughs> so I don't know what's true, what's not true, but I'm just gonna assume that you know, you love watercolor. So what is what is your favorite watercolor painting to make? <laughs> um, I, you know what? I mean, I actually do. I actually have a couple of paintings um, from uh, a, an artist called James Morrison, who's a Scot who was a Scottish artist. And he, he actually went, he painted a lot around Scotland, but also he painted up in the, the Arctic, the Arctic Circle, and uh, kind of obsessed with them. So yes, yes, he's actually, this is truth. Damn, I didn't know he'd actually put truths in here, but yeah. Okay. So like we're already breaking barriers. We're already like revealing secrets. So that so that is true. Right. You like it. Yes. Okay. And then yeah, there's another truth. There's a, there is another true true one there. Yeah. It's there's wild. another true one in here. Oh, mm. I'm assuming it's the languages that you speak five languages. I speak five languages. Fluent French, Norwegian possible, Sinhalese, fluent Gaelic possible, and English. I mean, to be honest, uh, I know you too well. <laughs> I'm a bit rusty. I'm a bit rusty in Sinhalese, but um, you know, a lot of those uh, African countries, it, you know, it, it's difficult for me to 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 just drop into it. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, I can barely speak English and Spanish, so I can only imagine what that would be like. Barely speak English, to be honest. <laughs> um, what was your favorite adventure that you told in the book? Um, because there's so many adventures that you guys had. I mean, it's just crazy. And I don't want to give too, too much away, but you guys had a good time. And I mean, you went all over New Zealand. So we what did we really did. And, like really pick out that stands out to you specifically for this book? God, it's, it's really hard because, you know, ev everywhere we went, you know, we had so many, it was really was quite an intense journey. Actually, we just did so much, um, from, you know, meeting, incredible wildlife from great white sharks to the kiwi bird to um to eating amazing food we did a bunch of adrenaline and stuff you know from bungee swings to speedboats to going up in helicopters um the maori the maori really was incredible um we dedicated i think a whole chapter to it because um it was such an, an amazing experience to be welcomed into uh into the marae into the, by this local iwi this local tribe um, and that was quite early on and, you know, just to, to understand a bit more about their culture and 
um, to see that there were almost a lot of similarities between the sort of Scottish Highlanders back in the day and, and the Maori. But um, yeah, just just an amazing group of islands and every day was was an adventure. So it's hard to pick one out for sure. That's a really good one, though, because I think you mentioned um, in there that you guys played with penguins and got to meet them. And that they and what I really loved about it, too, is that you also mentioned the names that the Mahori people call them, which I'm going to pronounce incorrectly, probably. But I, I tried to write it out phonetically. Corora. Is that right? I'm probably I'm butchering that. Oh my but, God, those, the, those penguins are, the, I think, the smallest, uh, smallest penguins in the world or one of the smallest. Um, and they are an incredible little group of penguins that, that sort of have this yeah, evening, every evening when the sun goes down, they sort of attack the beaches. They storm the beaches in, in, in what they call rafts, in, in whole groups of penguins, because obviously safety in numbers. And then they run across this sort of obstacle course to get to their burrows. Um, and it's very exciting, uh, apparently. Um, they built a, an amphitheater there for people to watch these penguins running about and getting lost. And they do. They get lost. They go in their own burrow. There's there's all kinds of activity. Um, and of course, we'd also drank several bottles of wine, amazing New Zealand wine, whilst watching this. So we were thoroughly amused. I'm not sure the penguins were that amused. <laughs> I can see the two of you guys just like laughing. I think it was like the best thing ever. And these little penguins are like, leave us alone. <laughs> yes, yes. We were supplying our own commentary. And the local seals, the sea lions that were there, were completely uninterested. I guess they watch that every night. <laughs> Well, um, I love that. And I love that you kept incorporating both of you, the culture and the words and the correct terminology for what you know, New Zealanders oh, call boy. Yes. Like yes, it's hard. I mean, a lot of the um, the Maori names are, are quite complicated to say. And in fact, doing the audio book, um, uh -huh. I had to, to say a, a number of them, especially the longest name in Maori, which is... It, it just goes on and on and on. I had no chance. Um, I challenge the reader, dear reader, or people watching Men and Kills the show to uh, to try and say it. It's, uh, it's a real challenge. Well, I want to ask you quickly as well, too. You have a chapter about the Celtic connections. So why was it important for you to correlate or how many people from the Highlanders like that are Scottish, from various backgrounds, live there, and then people that don't live that aren't with a Scottish background that live there that have that same Celtic connection. Why was it important to bring that to light on how big they take, you know, those things seriously in terms of honoring the past? Yeah. I mean, look, the, the Celtic connection is, is huge and it's partly why we decided to go there. Not only because Graham lives there, um, but because it has this huge, um, Scottish or Irish connection. Um, you know, the islands were only inhabited by human beings, you know, way back in, they guess, around 1400 um, when the Pacific Islanders first uh, emigrated there. But then this colonization of people basically displaced from Scotland predominantly after, you know, the Jacobite uprising. Um, so it really seemed like a natural progression, not only from what we've done in season one and of Men in Kilts, but also the first book, to then tell that story of where did these people go? They went to the colonies. They went to Canada and, and America and Australia and, of course, New Zealand. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it is. There's this huge population there. Uh, a lot of the customs are kept up. You know, we saw uh, local boys playing bagpipes. They have Highland Games. Even the Maori wear, sometimes they wear kilts, so they have this Scottish connection. Um, and there's even the town of Dunedin, which is based on Edinburgh, um, where the street names are all the same. Um, so it really is, there's this strong underlying Scottish connection, which I guess, you know, of course, being Scotsman, we wanted to to explore a bit more. And I have to ask too, um, so every book that you guys write and everywhere you go, I feel like you add to your bucket list. So what are a couple of things that you might have now added to? I don't know if one is don't do anything with grab anymore. <laughs> no, but if one is like, you know, to, I know Mount Everest has been a big thing for you. So yeah. are there um, bucket list items that you've added on recently? Yeah. I mean, that's always been a bucket list for me ever said um, just to see it. I think, uh, you know, I was attached to a movie that hasn't happened, but it, you know, never know. And I was working on a possible docu show, but I would just love to see the Himalayas. I'd love to see Everest. Um, 
the the Arctic or the Antarctic, you know, I'd love to go to either of those. Um, kind of fascinating in South America. I'd love to spend more time there. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of the world to see. Uh, and I realized very recently that actually, you know, I've been in America for very recently promoting my gin brand all over. And it was really fantastic. But there's so much that I haven't seen of America and, and even Europe as well. So there's there's definitely a lot more of the world to explore. Well, I want to ask you if we could do this something fun because people love your voice. You have this beautiful voice when we listen to your narrations and like the audio books. Yes. So- <laughs> Don't get mad at me, but I wanted to know if you would read maybe like a sentence or two from the book. Oh, of course. Yes. A pleasure. I mean, I have already done it. You can purchase the audio book. Um, well, yeah, I know both links below, but I mean, it's something different when they get to see you and hear you. I mean, come on, you're Sam. What would you like me to read? Just the first bit? Yeah, any part that you feel comfortable with. Okay, I'll, I'll read them the first section that I'm in. This is the introduction. So, as someone new to New Zealand, I'd always imagined it. It's two treasure islands, South Island, Te Waipunamu, and North Island, Te Ika Amaui, in the Pacific Ocean at the bottom of the world. Excuse my pronunciation. A country filled with hobbits and flightless birds, the best rugby players in the world, and the home of one very grumpy Scottish actor. I imagined a landscape uncannily similar to the Scottish Highlands, equal in beauty, but much more heightened in drama and pristine wilderness, basically much bigger than body Scotland. Pro, you're like a... There you go. You can get the audio book and and hear more of my terrible pronunciations. Oh no, your audio books are like beloved. You must know this. So I'll have links below for um, the audio book to buy the book, like pre-order the book uh, for your events that you guys are doing. So all the information will be below if you guys are watching this video and you can click on it. And then, of course, of course, course. I'm ready to half a bottle in. So yeah. You need some more. I love you so much. You're the best. I want to thank you so much for joining and speaking with me. You talk to me about everything. I love you. I could not be more proud of you and all of you that you've done. And just the friendship that we built over time. And I just, I just adore you. I Thank could- you so much. It's always good to see you, honestly. Really appreciate it. Next time in person. Yes, next time in person. And we'll have to get drinks and food or something. Done. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, and have a great rest of the day. I will. It's night here now. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a night there or something. Yeah, so <laughs> have a good dinner. Um, and thank you so much. You too. Good to see you. Thanks a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Sam Hewen talk about the book that he co-wrote with Graham McTavish called Clanlands in New Zealand, Kiwi's Kilt and an Adventure Down Under. Both the book and the audible version of the book will be available on November 7th. You could pre-order it now or purchase it from your favorite local bookstore. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. That way you'll never miss an episode and you'll be the first one to know when one of our interviews is released and online.